I am back. Hey, what's up, you guys? I just got one question. Did you survive? Did you survive the sweat fest of 2015? Yes, double XP this weekend. It was the sweatiest lobbies ever. You had people that came out in huge parties. They had their gunner glasses. They had their G Fuel. They were going harder than ever with scuffs. This was a sweaty weekend. And to make things even worse, the game was doing what the game does. We're talking lag fest. The lag fest 2015. I saw the weirdest, weirdest things happen during this game. I mean, this is even before Sweat Fest. It was one game of domination. I'm playing with the Camper Nation. Me and Funk Teasy, when we spawned in, we were on the enemy side. I was like, why are we so far from the flag? We were closer to their flag. I started running. I saw the whole team. And that's the kind of stuff that's been happening. I was playing uplink here. I was looking at the, the spear. I'm looking at it. And it's, you know, showing red. And I'm looking at it. Next thing you know, it's an enemy team scored. I'm like, what the hell? The ball is in front of me. So you got this game, which is virtually broke. And then you got these sweaties out. So what do you do? Now, here's the funny thing. You, you got to keep on going. You got to keep on playing. But in my opinion, this game should have been one of the best CODs ever. I mean, honestly, it has all the makings to be one of the best CODs. The beta was awesome. I don't know about you guys, but I loved playing the beta. But they have nerfed this game into being a turd game. They're nerfing everything. And honestly, you want to blame someone? Blame people like Chaos Silencer, the YouTuber. He's doing a series on guns that need to be nerfed. He started with the Gorgon. Now, I can argue about the Gorgon. Was it a little OP? No, it wasn't. The gun has a fire rate as slow as a snail, and you can't turn with it. Okay, they can kill you in two shots. Great. A sniper can kill you in one. That doesn't mean you nerf it. You know, that's what a sniper does. That's what a Gorgon did. But the funny thing is they're nerfing things that shouldn't be nerfed. They're not buffing things that need to be buffed. I'm still waiting for the mother um, ship to be buffed. How about buffing the wraps? Honestly, for the cost of these high score streaks, these things should be almost impossible to take out. When a talent is better than the highest score streak, something is wrong. I mean, why would I ever use a wraps, a GI unit, a mother ship? Other than make videos for you guys, I wouldn't use that stuff. I get way more kills. I can go with a talent in the care package and do better than getting three motherships in the game. And instead of buffing it, they're sitting there nerfing everything. It's like they're nerfing the fun out the game. Now, besides Chaos Silencer, I've seen some MLG players tweet, Oh, you need to get rid of the Gargan. And I'm thinking, what the hell do they care? Now, here, let me make a point. Probably 95%, maybe even higher, of the people that play this game, they're regular, everyday people. MLG doesn't account for a huge part of the population. Most people playing this game are regular people, but yet they want to cater to these turds. Now, I got a few thoughts on that. Okay, so the Major League Gamers, they don't like this gun. Well, during MLG play, don't allow the gun. They already take out certain things during MLG play anyway. If you ever notice that, like they may not have um, a trip mine or they may take out certain things, why don't you just take out this gun? But don't change pubs up because you got some optic pinhead junior that doesn't want it in the game. I don't understand why they cater to MLG at all. I don't at all. And I'm going to tell you, the biggest influence I've had in it over this game, or the biggest influence to me in this game has always been YouTubers. I don't care about MLG players. I can't even name one, to be honest. I would have to sit there and think. I know there's some teams like Optic and FaZe, but I don't know who those guys are. I don't buy this game because of them. But YouTubers have definitely influenced me. And you guys know I talk about Chris Smooth. You look at people like 402 Thunder, I guarantee you he can say something great about this game. And 100,000 people are pre-order. Who cares about these MLG players? No, I mean, honestly, it's great that they're MLG. I'm, I'm not trying to knock them for being MLG. Don't take it the wrong way. What I'm saying is their influence on this game, for me, is nothing. I love when a YouTuber enjoys the game. So why are they catering to these turds? You know, if you want to make a good MLG game, that's fine. But that needs to be separate from what we play in the pubs. I enjoy the game. I enjoy it for what it has. I enjoyed it for the Gorgon. You know, quit taking out the fun factor. Look at me. I'm playing Uplink. I discovered Uplink during Lagfest 2015. I discovered it during, you know, Sweatfest. I, I got on the game and I'm laying people down. Honestly, I think people have been sleeping on this. I was just playing with um, Phenom on my playlist and we were playing and I was telling him, I was like, this is too easy. He's like, I've never played this. I was like, watch how easy this is. I think I went flawless that game. And that's what's happened. I'm getting into these games and, you know, I'm being defensive. I'm playing objective. No, I'm not going to run the ball. I'm not a running back. I'm not. I'm a defensive player, and I'm holding back, and I'm holding things under control. If you notice, I'm watching our flag. I'm not letting people score. I'm being the defensive MVP, and look at all these streaks I have. 
I got my hives. I got my Cerberus. I got my um Ray. I'm ready to drop it on them the next round. You know, they nerfed my hives. I mean, I guess I could complain about all this stuff because nerfs and buffs are supposed to be to balance the game out. But this is the problem I have with that. This game had a beta on Xbox One. It had a beta on PS4. They've had plenty of time. They had YouTubers all during the alpha phase. Why are they changing things now? The problems that we had during the beta was a lot to do with matchmaking. You were being a party. You have six people. You go to join the game. Four people fall off. Or two on one team, two on another team. Guess what? Those problems still exist. I thought the beta would clear that up. I, I had faith in Treyarch. By the time the beta is done, we're not going to have those kind of problems. By the time the, reg the regular game opens up, we're not going to have people having um, party chat problems. I honestly feel like if you're in a party, you get punished in this game. I don't know how many of you guys are noticing that, but the lag is horrible in a party. Now, I got to admit, my lag has gotten a lot better. I got to net do my router, and I'll talk about that in another video of my thoughts on it. I actually want to give it a little more time. And so far, it's been really, really great. I've been in lobbies, and there's been lag in the lobby, but for some reason, it's not affecting me like it did before. Before, But like I said, I'm going to talk about that in another video. I want to give that Duma like at least a two-week period before I recommend it or don't recommend it or tell you what I really think of it. But if you notice, let's get back to what I was talking about about parties. It seemed like there's a penalty for being in a party. Whenever you're in a party, you're getting hit the hardest. You're getting hit the hardest with lag and a lot of BS. You know, jumping in the lobbies and they're putting you on separate teams. You, you're not jumping in with your friends to be put on separate teams. You're not jumping in with your teams to be lagged out of every game. Now, probably the biggest problem I'm having after games, it boots me back to the original screen sometimes for no reason. I thought about probably deleting the game and reinstalling it. But you know how long it took to install this game and all the updates? There? I'm not doing that. I don't know if it's my copy. And I get a feeling it's not just me because I hear a lot of people with the same complaints. Now, here's the funny thing. I'm having... I'm 50 50 on the fun factor when I actually do get into a game I have fun when I get into a game from the beginning and you don't have the bull I enjoy this game even with the Gorgon being nerfed I'm still laying people down I'm being nasty look at this I've been playing with the BRM just because I'm trying to go ahead and unlock everything again I'm grinding it out but still at the end of the day there was no reason to nerf the BRM I mean not the BRM the dingo so I'm to the point now where I just want the game to be fun I don't want this game to be a failure I liked Ghost, Advanced Warfare, skill-based matchmaking killed it. To me, that would have been the simplest fix. Take skill-based matchmaking. I got a feeling they're trying to slip it in this game a little bit. I noticed that the better I get, the more greasy my games are getting. To me, that seems a little bit like skill-based matchmaking. Are they trying to sneak it in? Now, look at this game here. Let's focus on the game. That's enough of me, Ranch. There's only three minutes left in this game. We're up three to nothing. I don't know how many kills I have, but you notice I'm going flawless. And all I'm doing is being defensive. You know, it's funny. I should name this video Beating People with No Skills. Because, you know, a lot of people like to say camping takes no skills. You just sit in a corner and shoot people, which is, it could be partially true. Sometimes you sit in a corner and shoot people because, you know what, you hear them coming. That corner makes sense. You know, I guess if I ran out in the open and shot him in their back, it would make a difference. Like I saw that guy sitting there, but I wasn't even worried about him. The beehive took him out. You know, you get those little silly arguments all the time. And if this is no skills... Then no skills is what I have. I have the the noest no skills you've ever seen. Yes, I'm laying people down. I've been working on my KD all morning. I got it up to a 6.35. Earlier I was a 6.15. I'm going to try to work that up. My goal is to get to a 7 KD and to maintain that throughout the whole game. Now, that will be the highest KD I've had out of any CODs. But this is the first time I'm actually trying to play for a higher KD. And the other CODs, I didn't really care. Like, I'll go out. Sometimes I'll rush. Sometimes i knife. And so I'm trying to see if I just go ahead and I stay patient myself and I try to work people. Can I get a really high KD? And so far, so good. And, you know, I've pretty much mastered all these maps. I'm waiting for the DLCs to come out because I want to see how those will be. Usually when DLCs drop, my KD go up even higher. Advanced Warfare and all those other games, even Ghost, for some reason, the DLCs cater to my playstyle. I don't know why these guys do that. But when they make maps, I feel like they're even easier to cap. You know, but that's just my opinion. We'll see what happens. Look at this. We're laying these guys down. I got a Severus down. I got a Wraith up. You know, I'm just doing what I do best. And I'm trying not to complain. You guys, I've been calling myself 402 Saken. And that's not a dog, 402 Thunder. I like 402 Thunder's commentary. But you got to admit, he complains a lot. You know, he talked even through ghosts and all that stuff. So I'm like, man, I'm complaining so much. I might as well call myself 402 Saken. I changed my name on Twitter today. Back to Saken, just because I'm like, okay, I don't want anyone to think I'm trying to throw shade on him. The last thing I need is a YouTube beef. beef. Ain't nobody got time for that. 
So right now, there's a minute left in this game, y'all. I just wanted to see how you guys are feeling about the game, how you guys felt about Sweatfest. Ugh. Look at that. I thought I heard somebody. Look at this. I'm just a UAV assassin laying people down. Hey, look at this. Okay, so I've been re wrecking everybody throughout this game. Now, look at this one mistake. Look, I'm flawless. Ugh, he was just sitting there waiting. But you know what? I was thirty on a 34 kill streak. But you know what? Where you at? Look, I'm just pre-firing, pre-firing, pre-firing. Get laid down, son. I had to go back and get my revenge. How's that Turgo taking me out? I was on a flawless game. One stupid guy with his specialist lays me down. Oh, speaking of that, since we got a little bit of time, I got like 20 seconds. I want to talk about why I stick with the hives. A lot of times people want to know why I don't go with other specialists. I go with specialists that get you kills. I'm not trying to do a specialist that makes you turn into three people, make you turn into invisible, things like that. You don't get any kills with those specialists. I like the fact that my hives can get me four to eight kills now that they nerfed it. A game, to me, that's effective. And that's why I go with the special. Anyway, we're about to end this game. I'm hitting you with a double dose today. Jump, dropped a video earlier. Hey, just to let you guys know, too, I might get a little slow in the videos Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It is the holiday. I'm going down to L.A. to spend time with family, so I'm not going to be on as much. But anyway, thank you for your support. If you watched the video for this long, hit a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that sub. All right, we're coming back at you. Let's go. Be found. One shot, one kill. I put Crybabies on YouTube. That's nasty.